So, uh, here with Heath Woods. This is his crazy build uh, that is a JK four length front with hydro assist. And that's something you usually only see in like an Ultra 4 modified class car. So, it's a very unique build. Sits really low and wide. And I'm just going to take a look around it. So, why did you go with the four link with the hydro assist and the cantilever steering in the front. So I've been building a long time. We've built every shape of rig that there is. I've been wheeling since early as I can remember. So tons on Jeeps and V8s is, you know, since the 80s. I've been wheeling all over. But it's just the recipe. That's what you want, you know. And I've had lots of Jeeps. Just about every kind of Jeep there is to have, you know. And, what I've been wanting to do in the background, you know, I'm an army veteran, always wanted to have, I had this itch, I wanted to have, a, I wanted to give back, I wanted to do something more, I wanted to have that team environment that I had when I was in, it's hard to find when you're out, Yeah. everybody's got a different way to describe it, but, so I just had this urge, this itch to do something different, so I started the veteran build, and the veteran build is simply just me choosing to do it me choosing to talk about my story talk about you know things i didn't ever want to talk about never talked about I finally started speaking about it and the problem i have is i don't like being alone i don't like where my mind goes when i'm alone yeah, and i'm not the only guy that's like that yeah and you can package that into a million different ways right everybody's got a different level of exposure when it comes to something like that mm -hmm. and it's you gotta, I don't know, I'm OCD and I want to tinker. I got to keep myself busy. I don't sit and watch TV. I got to do something all the time. You know what I mean? So me choosing to do the veteran build fixed a lot of my own problems. Because yeah. now I'm not isolated and alone. I've got camaraderie. I've got friends. I've got a team. I've got people that I can lean on. And the off-road community has done that for me a hundredfold. You know what I mean? Through my whole life. So every off-road thing I've ever been involved with it's just been legendary, awesome. You know, memories that you carry with you, you're passionate about this memory. This something that you, this great thing you went and did with these guys. The same kind of thing we had when we was in the military. Yep. We, we did these great things with these guys that you willing to, to give for. And I find that in off-road community in massive scales, all over, far and wide, you know, wheeled all over the place. So that, stemmed me to get out of my own ways, have, get out of my own comfort zone and have do the veteran build like I want to do it. Which is, I don't, I don't want a website and a donate button. I don't want to have that conversation of, oh, why do you do this or blah, 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 blah. It's not about me. This ain't about a company and a brand. It's not about you and your product. It's not about your sponsorship this money this money that why aren't, it ain't about any of that it's about you and me having a friendship and gonna go do adventures together mm -hmm. it, just as simple as that the the deeper conversation will come after we build a rapport that didn't matters yep. after we choose to give a shit about each other then then it matters is then my what my words have weight with you mm -hmm. not just because Oh, you've heard I do something or I do free work for veterans or whatever. That's, that's just my personal choice that I do on my side. For 20 years now, I've been doing free works for every veteran service member that has a need. Mm -hmm. Am I rich and have a big company backing and have all this stuff to get? No, I don't. Have, I, I work. I'm a mechanic. I go out in the field and fix trucks. Mobile service repair. Been doing it forever. I got two daughters and a wife for 26 years. That's it, man. I'm just a blue collar working guy. Okay. But what the Lord has given me is fixing things is easy. You know, we got guys that are really good at computer stuff. I don't know how to build a computer. They can have all that. Yeah. But I can fix broken vehicle stuff. Okay. Been around it. So that's what I have to give. So veteran guys have, you know, just like lots of people, will have a. Uh, an obstacle, per se. 
So overcoming obstacles is my tagline for the veteran build, and you can package that in many different ways. But it's usually when I talk to a veteran, it's some sort of excuse of why they're not getting out or why they can't go or why they're, you know, especially guys that are maimed or missing limbs or anything like that. That's the first thing they're going to say, well, I don't want to slow you down. I don't want to do this. I, you know, we blow all that out of the water. It's not. We want to, we're going to do this with you. This is, this is, it's about us and the team and the camaraderie and going out and making memories worth remembering. That is it. Nothing else matters. That's what we want to do. True. We're a collection of adventures and memories. So, so do you think that this, you this, this vehicle has been a, a vehicle for that. The veteran builds, you know, we've had several different builds over yeah. the years. And it's it all starts with, hey, I got a I got a veteran buddy who's been wanting to come out and meet you, and you know, he's he's having problems with his vehicle or whatever, and that's why he can't get out. He's he's been wanting to come out, but he can't come out. I'm like, well, what's the deal? You know, we go get him packed up, bring him to the shop. A bunch of guys will jump on it. We'll put a bunch of veteran hands on it and fix this problem. We're overcoming this obstacle. Yeah. You don't longer have this excuse. We fix this problem. This is something I can fix. It's something I can do. You know, I can't fix all your problems, but it, damn, car's broke. I can fix it. Can help you with yeah. something. I, I guess something I can do. So I tuned my life around it. I, the house I'm in now and the shop that I'm in now, I chose it because it gave me a, a platform to host a better and build better. Okay. You know what I mean? So I try to keep extra in my life so that I got something to give. I try to keep my skills sharp so I got something to give. And there's got to be more people that are willing to do stuff out of the ordinary extra on top of what their normal day to day is so that they got something to give back sure. so this is this is a product of that environment okay so the veteran build we just hung out in the shop i had a jeep it burnt to the ground burnt to the ground i was devastated because i was super happy to get it I like older to special edition like is the first vehicle i ever bought as an adult okay i've always had hand-me-downs and you know old stuff that we've reconditioned or whatever but the first one that I, as an adult, went and bought, I want to buy this Jeep. And was loving it, was building it up. These bumpers were on it. Okay. And it burnt to the ground. Was it a JK also? Yeah. Okay. So I had a bl 11 Black Ops Rubicon. Okay. It was the first new new car I ever owned. Loved it. Was building it up, was going to do, you know, build me a Jeep. And it burnt to the ground in an accident. And I was devastated. And the first time I ever had an insurance claim, didn't know what the hell I was going to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the lady was, she literally said, well, I'm glad you bought a Jeep because, you know, it got good return. And I turned right around and bought this 15. And then she told me, she was like, oh, you can take your stuff off of it or whatever. So okay. I, I pulled the these things were melted with stuff all over them, whatever. And we spit and ground them up in the shop. And I was like, there ain't no way this is going to be good. They were perfect. So reclaimed the bumpers, put them back on this build. And it began, we just started hanging out, wheeling on the weekends, helping as many people as we can. And the, the group of guys locally started gathering. And I like, like you, I like teaching. Yep. So that fixes a problem with me. As soon as I got another human that I can show you how to do something or get you over a hurdle, I'm on fire. Mm -hmm. I'm my best self yeah. when I'm giving back to you that fixes my problem. So I just wanted to put that on repeat as much as extra time as I can to give into that, we do it. So we'd host shop nights and we'd give this space for them to come and we'd work through everybody's problems together as that. a group, right? Yeah. So we just got more and more people started coming around and I've been almost 20 years now running the veteran build as a just group of guys fixing problems. Okay. So, so we taught, we taught like man 30 30 40 window of veterans how to weld that they okay. never welded before so it turned loose taught them how to weld while we were building all this okay we've had guys that have never put lift kits on never never modified a jeep they've had a stock view how many guys do you think have welded all this it's it's in the 40 or 50 range okay of, of veterans themselves so there's probably more of just other people that have been involved in too that are non-service members mm -hmm. So a lot of hands have been in and around this. Okay. You know, a lot of a lot of people have come and gone. You know, guys will come through and want to be a part, but they live far out. Or, well, and every one of those guys can say, 
have a can have now have a story on this vehicle. Like, and that's, and that's this is I, something yeah, I've done yeah. on this. For and, sure. Yeah, th th that's that's a unique thing. And all the while, every time we're putting a hand on this, I'm putting a hand on theirs. Yeah. You know, if they got something going on with theirs, we're diving in, fixing the problems that they got, modifying their rigs up too. Yeah, that's part of it. You know, it's just when you hang out with this group of people, it, it's infectious. You know, and I want it to be that way. I want to be the light in the room. I want to be a better man. And if I'm going to do that, I got to say that out loud. I'm not going to act on it. Yep. I can't just talk about it. We're going to act on it. Yep. So we try to do that. It's like anybody that's got questions or want it, want it, they this inspires them or gets their wheels turning or that's neat. Man, I'm gravitating toward that. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Why is it neat to you? What are you, are you wanting one? Are you wanting to build one? Or, and then they give me the excuses. They start coming. Well, I don't know how to weld, or I don't have a shop, or I don't have this, or I, you know, I got to work all the time. Man, I work all the time. I pull 100 hour weeks all the time. But I'm still, you get, you got time for what you choose to have time for. And it's, I choose to have time for us to have some camaraderie, go plan some adventures, come home with a pile of memories you can't wash off. So just like Chance and Recool, awesome. We met because of the veteran bill. Yep. You know, we met because of the off-road community. Me and you met the same way. Yeah, this, we met this, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we started talking when actually you were doing the suspension and the one-ton swap on this, I believe. Sure. Uh, and But we never met in person until a month ago. Right. Yeah. But we'd talk online for years. Yep. And it's the same thing. It's just... The reason I chose this route is because I wanted to teach the guys that you didn't, you don't have to have a mountain of money to have nice things. Yeah. This is all 100% trade and barter. Trade and barter system built this Jeep. I bought the Jeep, but all the stuff work has been done to it has been done ourselves by hand with no AutoCAD and computer generated or nothing. We just old school teach them how to pull string lines on the floor and chalk on the table and pull a measuring tape and figure it out yep. and it's trial and error yeah you learn from your mistakes you learn from your failures so we got it we started having little walls on the shop of oh well, we tried it this way that one didn't work we hung that up this version a that one sucked you know come over here and try this but it was just all a part of the process of teaching them it's okay yep. you don't have to have a full crazy engineered kit from somebody that cost a fortune you can just build this thing don't be scared to get in there and try, figure it out. So uh, let's go do an overview on just what's been done to it. Right. This about 2015 JK Rubicon, you know, I wanted it nice inside because this is going to be kind of my retirement rig. I'm keeping it forever because of what it is and because of all the hands that have been on it. So I've got my fire bumpers that I started fabbing off of my Jeep that I bought first. So those are awesome. You know what I mean? So you you built those? I did. I built okay. these from scratch in the same way. And it all came from trade and barter and scrap metal. So everything is old material. So all the plate and tab and truss work and all of that was old tanks, full filled scrap. Okay. You know, we'd pull from work. Again, I'm a mobile technician, so we'd get scrap pieces and old frame parts and you'd yeah. cut them out. If I needed a tab, there's there's tabs on the suspension that were like the side of a Peterbilt frame. We just torched out the tab out of the metal <laughs> yeah. because it's just free material. I, mean, so. I think a lot of people don't think about using material like that to get an end result like this. And of yeah. course you look at this stuff and you're like, oh wow, you where'd you get those tabs from? And would never expect that it came from wherever it came from. Well that's the thing. When you go around and count tab work and just flat plate work, it's literally like a, a piece of a frame, an old filled tank and you know an old floor plate. I mean like our adventure bike, I built the skid plate thing out of a, it was the floor of a walk-in freezer because it was all aluminum. <laughs> so this is whatever we can find, but that's the beauty of trade and barter and just teaching the guys that, hey, we, this is how old school people used to do it. This is how it was back in the day. So we got the fire bumpers off the other Jeep. I mean, it's half inch plates on the bottom. You know, when you hit it, when you walk around the parking lot full of Jeeps and, and hit a bumper, they don't all sound like that. <laughs> so it's made to smack the rocks all day. I'll trail break a lot, you know, and so I needed to be able to push trees down and, and make my way through stuff. So I cut the frame horns back. This original design was without a winch. The winch was going to be cut into the grill or inlaid into the frame. So I originally cut this bumper 
you know, all with the front tube touching the grill. Okay. So it was back another four inches. Yeah, that, and that's way far back. Way back. Yeah. So the original crush zone in the frame, front cross member, all that stuff got lanced off. And it's cut off at an angle. So the end of the frame on the factory frame is right here. There's a butt plate on the end of the frame, and that bolt runs through it. So it's overkill, over-engineered, but that's just part of it. The We traded a lawnmower. I traded a riding lawnmower that I got off the side of the road on trash day. I fixed the lawnmower. I mowed my yard with it for a while, and then I traded that lawnmower for these axles. <laughs> and what axles are they? These are 2010 F350 Super Duty axles. 60 and a Sterling? Yeah. Okay. 10.5 Sterling, 60 front, and so the things that I can't build, right? I can't build lockers and gears and, you know, so we. I built and traded bumper work and trailer work and fab work and time and hauling crap for people. You know, I got a truck and trailer, did some hot shot runs, just whatever we could do to get the pool of money together. And that's the thing I got with my wife is like, I don't use my work money for this, you know, for the veteran built stuff. I, I've got to trade and barter and come up with a, and I've had tons of people like, oh, we want to donate or we want to do this. Oh, there's plenty of, there's plenty of places to put that money for them guys to do that. The only way you can donate to the veteran build is you got to show up and make dirty hands. You got to meet a veteran and go do something with a veteran. Make it make an impression on their life. Give them a quality of life because you went and did an adventure together. That's the only way I want donations. Other than that, I'm just going to continue to do adventures on my own. So trade a, trade a lawnmower, got a set of tons, started chop cutting and building on them. And you They're, got what, uh, ox lockers in it? Or yeah, we put a, at least in the back. I see the diff cover says ox. Yeah, so it's ox lockers front and back. I like oxes because I've had a lot of ARBs fail. Yeah, and once it starts leaking air, it's always in the worst possible place. And the only way you can fix it is to completely tear it down so that you can get in and put a new air seal in it. With the with the ox, I mean, I can rip the cable off. I can craft the housing, and it, I mean, all it takes is a push, and you can lock it. So you can what, always get yourself what in and out. What method do you have? With all these? So it's it's a cable on the ox locker but i've run the electric actuator to use the factory rubicon buttons. Oh, okay so factory rubicon buttons on the dash indicator light on the dash and cluster and all just like it was from the rubicon is just a electric actuator on the end of the cable and for anybody that doesn't know the ox lockers uh they can be manually operated cable air or electric like yeah. they, they they're they, one of the only ones that'll cross all the yeah, they, they give it. you different options to uh engage that locker and then in an emergency you can manually do it too sure and then all else fails they got a bolt that you just put the bolt in there and then lock it and unlock locker. it okay I like that. so it can all of them can fail and you can still just put the bolt in and lock it so you're never going to be stranded in the trail without a locker you know so your four link front and rear well, full triangulated four link front. Yep. Just because, why not? It wasn't a reason of needing or necessity or anything like that. It was just, wasn't trying to make it complicated. It just kind of goes that direction. Well, and we, it, didn't, we didn't have a direction path. We were like, all right, we're just going to build a suspension. A triangular link flexes better. It's a, it's a more consistent movement. Like it doesn't shift side to side so much because sure. you don't have a, a, a track bar. To, you have to work the, with the end goal you know you start with the end goal on your build you know the end goal is a v8 swap and four link in the rear also yeah so i just started with the funds that i had so the budget that i had and the scrap that i had laying around i started with the axles and we got the axles built and then to get the gears and installs and shocks and all that stuff so i sold my rubicon axles out of the jeep to fund a bunch of that okay. stuff so we got that stuff going and then we started trading barter to get what else we needed? What's next? You know, and started stacking parts. But I did the full double light, double triangulated four in front because I wanted both front and back. Mm -hmm. Just like we've had comp buggies, you, it works really nice. You know, double triangulated four link is where it's at if you can fit it. Mm -hmm. and it's so hard to package it on the front because you're snaking around the motor and steering and the frame, and it gets really tight to package it in the front and stay low. So I built it low, built it wide, and the clearances inside the front of this is pretty insane when all the springs are out and it's setting a full bump. Yeah. So it looks like a factory tower. It's the it's the factory Jeep tower, but it's all been cut off the frame and moved. 
because it's a stretch. We're at 120 inches wheelbase. So we did mini stretch front and back both. Double triangulated four link front suspension. The full truss is all scrap metal plate, but it's full welded from C to C. So the top plate goes from, from eye to eye. And it's full ball joint deletes upper and lower. It's weld on high steer arms, crossover high steer, an old Caterpillar ram that came off of like a skid steer, I think. And then my teammate, he he, he runs a monster truck team. He built these bump stops for his monster trucks. Yeah. So he built me a set. Okay. So I got a full monster truck team bump stops front and rear. And then it's a dual rate coil for Metal Cloak in a six pack shock. So I bought Metal Cloak's kit for the, for the Jeep when I first got it. Okay. And we rocked it stock Jeep with just their lift kit. And they reused it with this. And I just yeah. reused the springs and shocks. I like their lower joints, their forged joint from Metal Club. So I bought all the joints from just the forged joint. And then okay. just remade the links to fit okay. the forged joint. So did the double triangulated four link. Of course, you know, that, that takes away your walk from your pan hard bar. Mm -hmm. So now I have... I can't have a pan hard bar or crossover steering because it's not it's gonna have bump steer. Yep. It's gonna interfere with the two different geometries. So that spun us into are we gonna go full hydraulic or are we gonna do this? And you went with a cantilever setup with hydro assist, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I went hydro assist and then we got a triple bell crank. Yep. So I use the stock Jeep steering boxes in there and I just drilled and tapped it. Should have not have drilled and tapped the stock yep. box. Run it through a cooler, run it through a factory pump. And going down to a you know reclaim ram off of some whole caterpillar. But to get to that point, it has to go back. Yeah, and, so it and comes follow off, down. It comes with... off the steering box and comes to a pivot point in the chassis. There's a pivot point on the frame right here. The steering box comes straight across to the frame, and okay. then it goes to the back to the transfer case all the way back here. It pivots at the transfer case, and then comes back up. There's a window in the truss. The window inside the truss where the, the third pivot point is goes down to the weld over high steer kit. So it's just three bell cranks that you are have added it, Do you have there. any bump steer with it? No. Okay. And I don't have any bump steer through the whole travel. That's good. So that that's the kicker. Because so what's next on the build is tuning all that. Okay. So I'm going to do sway bars front and back and then fine tune that. So we're going to pull the body off the frame lower up and down up and down and fine tune all those adjustments and get everything and i think a full travel no bump i think a lot of people don't realize like when you're really doing something to that extent how much actual testing and oh, trial yeah. and error there goes into For it sure. and it seems like you've already you have mountains of hours into that and yeah, yeah. you and you know you're going to have more of that yeah for sure and that's part of having something exotic like this you especially an off-road rig you're going to see abuse you're going to yeah. see hard hard hits it's it's not a, ever going to be a set it and forget it. You're going to play with it forever. You know they're, they're, the old saying is like, oh yeah, it's a Jeep. You never it's never done building. Well, it's you can finish your build to an extent, but then you're in a you got to maintain it after that. And that's part of the main, maintenance process is just going through and bolt checking everything. It's the same like like race prep. You know you got to go through and make sure it's roadworthy and bolt check it all and make sure it's safe and grease everything and lube everything and adjust everything. You know, it's just like tires. You can't balance a tire and it just be balanced forever. Yeah, no, it, it's only it, balanced it wears. that day. Yep. You know it, what it, I mean? Like I know mine. I've been been on trails. I've been at off-road parks, and there's cuts. There's uh, chunks missing, and sure. I, I know like they need to be balanced again because they're different than how they were when they were balanced. So b me being in the the big industry, all the all the big industrial stuff is balanced with beads. Yep. So these are all big bead balanced, but it's just airsoft beads. Yep. So I run like 26 ounces of airsoft beats in all my tires, and they last forever. Yep, they're great. I just scoop them out of an old tire and throw them in the new one and go again. Yep. I built my own bead locks, old school Hummer tires, old school Hummer reels. I recentered them with a softer uh, Carlisle yeah. press center mm -hmm. come in the back. So Carlisle's meal, when they stamp it in their meal, the OD of that press plate just happens to be the Yep. ID of a Hummer wheel, and they set in there perfect. And, 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 and I, th three and a half I think they, they look the best. Then I've seen flat plate cut ones, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Th those press ones with the the tapered holes look they're the really best. Strong, it, too. they're stronger, and they look better than any of the other centers that I've seen. Sure, um, it, it looks more like a 
actual wheel that came from a factory. Right. It's right. still home built. But so yeah. The story of the wheels is pretty crazy too. We didn't have. I want them to be concentric and round and you know true, so it'll go down the highway nice. Yeah. So we we put these stock right off a of Humvee, old school Hummer wheels, and we took them to O'Reilly's and we we asked the manager if I could use his brake lathe. So we mo I modified his brake lathe and put the wheels on the brake lathe and parted out the old Hummer Center on the brake lathe oh, okay. back of O'Reilly's. <laughs> And they had the whole crew in there. The guys come in like, you're not going to believe what this guy's doing back here. So I machined a whole set of wheels back there in the brake lathe and just took, <laughs> cut the old centers off. Did they charge you? No. He was just as, he was just dumbfounded. He was like, you know what you're doing? I was like, yeah, I've got this. I got this. We're going to make this work. I was like, you know, we just got to go slow. We can't take very big of a yeah. cut. So we just took our time. And it's auto set. So we just took a really small amount and okay. just hung out. And it just back there screaming, you know. Nice. <laughs> it's just like, that's just crazy. But you, you find a way to overcome sure. your obstacle, right? You know, we didn't have a fancy shop to do anything with. So, so uh, I think let's, let's wrap this up. If uh, anybody has any questions about what they're seeing here or um, want to just talk to you about the things you do or maybe want to get involved with the veteran build, how would they get a hold of you or find out about any of that stuff? So honestly, the veteran build has always been a word of mouth kind of thing. Okay. You know, the, the guys, the, the guys that want to find me, find me. You know, my name's Heath Woods. I got an open Facebook page. I post on there all the time about shop nights and stuff like that. So I'm very heavily involved in all of my local community, the veterans guys that are other off-road community. We're always going out and doing every event we can find just close by. And the, the word of mouth spread okay. plenty. So, so, so Facebook, look you up, Heath Woods. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure I don't have a website for the veteran build. I don't have any of that. It's just, it's just my own thing that I do on my, on my private property. And, and I don't know if there's many Heath Woods, but I do know if you go, if you click on a, a Heath Woods, you'll find, oh yeah, you'll see this, you'll see this, you'll sure. find it and it'll be easy to find. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for your time, sir. Yeah, man. All right.